All right. Um, yeah, a couple, couple minutes early, but um, we, uh, I guess, uh, so I guess start with introductions. Uh, I'm, my name is Adam, um, go by he, him. Uh, I'm a UI developer at Northwestern and be also presenting with Carla Arton from University of Virginia. Um, we're we're going to kind of like do a little handoff halfway through, so I'll, I'll let her introduce herself when she takes the takes the, the helm. Um, but we're here on behalf of the, I guess, you know, ourselves and also the, the UX interest group. We're the co-facilitators of, of the UX interest group. And today we're going to present on uh, design principles and how those may uh, possibly relate to the San Vera community. So this is, I guess, kind of a culmination of work that we've been uh, doing throughout most of 2021, which a lot of was spearheaded from San Vera Connect uh, one year ago when um, I was given a UX interest group update and uh, Carla reached out right after with some, um, I thought, really refreshing ideas about how to like think about user experience, um, like from maybe more of a, a higher level, which actually goes well with the present great presentation we just saw. Um, so instead of like focusing on you know just like code semantics and stuff like that, really thinking about um, larger I guess principles related to applications. Um, so uh, to start with. By you know, super high level, what are design principles? Um, the Interaction Design Foundation out of the, the Netherlands, which has been a pretty good resource I've come in contact with this year, um, defines it as fundamental pieces of advice for you to make easy to use, pleasurable designs. So design principles are, you know, just basically widely applicable laws, guidelines, um, biases and design considerations, which designers can apply with discretion. Um, when we apply, or we apply design principles when we select or create and organize elements and features in our work. So these principles should be fairly universal and applicable to to anything, whether it's say like uh, designing buttons on, on your microwave or maybe the, the features layout of your, your car dashboard. Um, these are all kind of subject to good design and design principles. Uh, we, however, uh, for this presentation and probably mostly in the same area community are thinking about design principles in the context of web applications. So maybe to help kind of clarify this with an example. Um, here, uh, recently Spotify uh, released their design principles, which are, are public and available for any and all to see, including you know, members of their organization and, and their, their users, the general public. Um, so I, I guess I'm kind of assuming that uh, some in the audience um, have used Spotify um, in the past to listen to music or perhaps something similar, Apple Music, iTunes, YouTube Music, something like that. Um, so I, I guess I would ask, maybe consider your experience um, using one of those apps and just think about that for, for a, a moment. Um, in those thoughts, you know, does the information when you're moving through the app, does it feel, say, relevant as you search for your favorite band or song? Um, does the app itself, as you're kind of navigating through it, does it have a human vibe or does it feel potentially like cold and maybe robotic? Um, or say when you go from like an artist page to a Discover Weekly playlist, or maybe your own playlist of curated songs. Do, do all these different areas of the application um, seem unified? Or does it feel like as you go from section to section, maybe of the app, they're not necessarily tied together? Um, 
So questions like this and considerations, I guess, are more or less design principles in action. And um, are questions user experience teams continually ask as web applications are being uh, built, refactored, extended, and so forth. So I guess you kind of think of design principles as like the goalposts, which um, may guide application development. <clears throat> So the idea is by applying these design principles in the applications that we're building um, or whatever we're working on design-wise, we're aiming basically to predict how users will likely react to our designs. Ultimately, we want um, happy, satisfied users um, for our repository applications and the user interface designs that go along with those. So to achieve this, the, the data suggests to achieve happy, satisfied users, um, they suggest we need to minimize two primary things, um, a user's cognitive load and their decision-making time. And the application of good design principles uh, can help us achieve this goal. So why do design principles um, matter to the San Barra organization? Well, first and foremost, um, I think because we all love our users and want to make them very, very happy. Um, but, you know, you also ask, like, why do major companies say like Spotify in the previous example? Why do they invest so heavily in design principles um, and arguably because it works? Um, for, for them, for Spotify, uh, you know, it attracts and retains users in a very competitive space. Uh, for Samvera, for the Samvera community, um, or, you know, edu educational or cultural heritage environments, it's, it's a little bit different. It's not quite like Spotify, um, but maybe we have the opportunity um, to, uh, you know, perhaps through, like using community design principles as a proxy to maybe even like publicly acknowledge shared community values. In keeping, you know, with this, this train of thought going, like what might happen if these, um, say, Samvera community values made their way into Samvera applications through design principles and these kind of application goalposts? Um, which teams might use in reference while building applications. And then to maybe tie this together of why it matters to, why or how it matters to Sam Vera. Um, you know, maybe just thinking about design principles is an opportunity for all of us to just take a, a fresh look at what we're building, um, why we're building it, and again, to, to focus on users and really ask, you know, are we meeting users' needs in the most effective way possible? So the vision of what Samvera design principles could, could become. Um, in a perfect world, you know, this wouldn't just be a document that uh, the UX interest group has been uh, working on very diligently over the past year. Um, but it would be, you know, potentially a, a, a document that is, is owned by a, a diverse group of contributors and users. I mean, hopefully um, the, the work that we've, uh, you know, put into it so far and kind of the idea of creating like an ongoing conversation, it's not um, something that we're just doing as like an academic exercise, but rather something that Hopefully people um, can all find some value in, whether it's product owners or, or developers or graphic designers or whatnot. Um, and, you know, thinking about this, maybe uh, if we had like a set of design principles that were made clear and, you know, somewhat agreed, agreed upon over, over the course of the time, um, you know, a, a set of these principles could be used as a tool to reference when you're um, first designing like an application, like say you're in the, 
just wireframing stage, or you're just thinking about how to implement a new feature, maybe consulting a set of design principles um, could just help in um, shaping uh, the, the plan for future work. Um, it could also, a set of design principles from Sambra could be used just to continually reference when in the process of actually building out the application. So say you're you know, halfway through a, a eight-week work cycle um, and just uh, you know, do a quick sanity check and make sure you, you haven't quite, you, know, you're, you haven't necessarily veered off like a, a certain path. You, know, you could reconsult a set of these principles um, given where you're at in your current uh, development cycle and just kind of measure whether you're still on track towards meeting those. And then finally, um, a set of Sanvera design principles could be used as a tool to um, you know, audit existing applications. So maybe there's uh, an app that, that uh, your team has built or the community's built that's you know, a year, two, three years old, um, and you're just looking for an opportunity to, to think about uh, that application in terms of like design principles and evaluating it against some, you know, some maybe newer, fresher criteria and identifying room for improvement within that application. And to, I guess, discuss the, the journey because a lot of this was um, Carla's uh, initial vision. I think now is a good time to pass it over to Carla. Hi. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you, Adam. Um, again, I'm Carla Artson. I'm at the University of Virginia. I'm uh, in a director of technology solutions within the library there. Um, so yeah, continuing off of where Adam was, our journey this last year um, was really starting actually when I started my role at University of Virginia. The library was just publishing its own internal design principles for, um, for its web communication. So that's where the idea came from, um, from me talking with Adam of why don't we do this with Sambera? And from there, we looked at some other um, uh, set of design principles that also available on a specific site that anybody can upload from their company. So looked um, at a wide range, um, but also heavily influenced by what we were doing at UVA as well. Um, from there, we drafted um, with the UX interest group, a first draft of design principles. We started with about nine, or not nine, um, five. And then um, with that draft, we asked if we could um, crash some of the monthly meetings for the Haiku, Avalon, and Hyrex groups and present on them and get their feedback. Um, Notche also um, was great and kind of tested out what we had so far and gave us feedback. And from there we revised and um, we're now presenting and we're publishing. So next one, the output, what did we get? They, they waited long enough. <laughs> yes. All right. So we have three principles, the used design principles, um, a little bit of a cheeky play on words, hopefully sticks in your mind. So uh, three principles, you being user-centered, S being socially responsible and sustainable, and E for efficient. Okay. But wait, there's more. Along with your use design principles, you also get this handy dandy tool, which we are in beta version for, but um, we put together a spreadsheet of um, the three principles, but with questions to go along with them, open questions. And um, the idea is that you can take this and use it as a base to take and reflect and discuss with your teams or with your users and really kind of get those um, good, good deep discussions going instead of, are we doing this or aren't we? Yes, no. Well, let's actually maybe talk about um, the terminology we're using as well. What does it um, mean to be user-centered and kind of things like that. Um, and then using that to, this spreadsheet also allows for you to um, rate how well you think you're doing. And then you can use that to potentially 
identify and prioritize where you'd like to go next with um, how well you think you are um, doing with adoption of these design principles. So, next one. So uh, breaking it down even further, what is user-centered? So user-centered, um, our sub-themes include accessible and universal, and some of the questions in that spreadsheet listed here, um, how familiar does the user interface feel? What does that mean? It's a good question as well. How cluttered does the application feel? Uh, how does the application use simple language? Um, so those are some examples. Engaging and intuitive. Some of the questions there, um, how easy is it to switch from using another application to this application? Where does the user feel friction when trying to complete a task and so forth? And you can see the little rank column as well, where you could put how well you think you're doing on a scale of one to five, and then the average score below. Uh, the third, Sub-theme is uh, inclusive and equitable. So some of these questions include how welcoming and approachable is the application? Um, does the user, how does the user experience stay consistent across different devices? Does, does the, um, the app empower the user to successfully complete their journey? Um, and what does that mean as well? I think a lot of these conversations can also say, well, what do we mean when we say this? And you might find that there's assumptions made by different parties within your group. Of, oh, well, I was, I meant this coming from a developer background versus a user background. This is what I thought that word means. So that's what that means to me. Um, so yeah, that's user-centered. The next principle socially responsible and sustainable. So our sub themes there are prioritizes standards and best practices. Does the app use popular open source libraries and packages? Um, would the application continue to meet standards and best practices if core developers left? Um, the other one is clearly and fully documented, something that we always intend to make time for. Where would a user find the application's documentation? Does the documentation branding and structure take, stay consistent? And um, if there was a new developer, where would they find the documentation that they needed to move forward um, and how easily could they find it? Um, and a lot, I also wanted to say that, again, that this spreadsheet is a bit in beta version. So we've put a lot of questions in there. Um, but we also would love to hear people's feedback as they start using it on some other great questions that they've come up with that we could add. And the spreadsheet was also set up so that if you want to go and change it for your own purposes, once you get in and you download it, you can also add in some questions that are specific to you. Uh, so the fourth subtopics, realistic resourcing. What do I mean by that? Um, do you, if you are going to use an application at the local level, do you have people on staff that can support it? And what happens if people um, leave um, building in that resourcing? So who has access to the source code as well? Are bug issues outweighing new feature issues? Um, so the real, really thinking the stuff that you wanna build out, do you realistically have the resources in time as well as human resources to carry this out as you're prioritizing the work? And then finally, transparent and ethical. Uh, is the app's code base open source? That's very important for someone like Sanvera. Is it community driven and managed again? And uh, does the app have a visible public policy around use, user data collection and analysis? So yeah, and our fourth or third principle, efficient. So minimal in design and latency, does the UI display more than is needed? Can the action be carried out with fewer lines of code? Questions like that. Um, consistent and predictable. How easy is it to understand and follow with minimal to no training needed? Um, and then the third sub-theme is modular and interoperable. How does the app take advantage of dry principles? Um, and how is it logically separated? 
So, um, and for interoperability as well, it's you know, very important when we're bringing in other applications that we want to work alongside um, within this application. So, yes, so those are our three main principles, um, user-centered, socially responsible, um, and sustainable and efficient use design principles. So what's next? So from this point, we are going to continue to promote these principles out to the Sanvera community. We'll talk with Heather um, moving forward on how we can do that um, with her involvement get feedback from you all and revisions for the spreadsheet once people start really using it. Um, we'd love to make it a really valuable resource, not just to give you principles and um, hope for the best, but actually give you um, a really useful piece um, of uh, how to use the um, design principles and really engage with them for your own purposes. And then, um, also, we would like to start looking for case studies um, of different places within the Sanbera community where we feel that the design principles are working really well that we can then write up and have as examples for the rest of the community to say, oh, this is, this is a user interface that we think is a really great example um, around accessibility uh, or inclusiveness um, and uh, so forth. And then uh, we have another idea as well of determining whether if the spreadsheet is fairly successful, then um, would it be worth us actually developing um, a tool to also measure and track progress so that if you wanted to um, do that as a team, use an application to kind of talk through each principle and rank how you're doing, that that could also be a useful tool moving forward. That could be something made for like, you know, say certain teams are more like metrics driven or whatnot, or just like numbers and like, uh, you know, some kind of scoring mechanism. But um, yeah, I think as Kyla mentioned, you know, this, the, the idea of this is just, we're just brainstorming ideas of like how this could be, um, instead of just saying, oh, this is a, a useful um, like list of, of principles. How could we like try to make it a little bit more interactive or just like, uh, you know, thinking of, of tools like the, the spreadsheet checklist and, you know, possibly yeah, taking that checklist and converting it to some kind of like app where maybe one day we could say, okay, here's the, maybe the, the top five most used Sanvera applications. Um, you know, how do they rank by certain like, community, I don't know, defined standards and metrics or whatever. So yeah, that's us. Um, we have an interest group update in a little bit as well, but we usually meet on the second Wednesday of the month. And then you can, you know, so our space on the wiki and in Slack as well, if anyone would like to to participate in the next um, next kind of phase of this as well. We'd love to have more people join and, and give their voices to this as well, because um, yeah, we want it to be useful to you. Use useful use design principles. <laughs> so, we, can, um, we, we, we can post that link maybe in like yeah, the Slack channel to the, the checklist. Okay, um, and yeah, yeah the, the main takeaway is just having this kind of be, you know, I don't think there's any like hard start date or end date or anything to this, but you know, this could just be like an ongoing conversation and maybe these principles look a certain, you know, if they were to gain some traction, maybe they look a certain way in a month and maybe six months from now, um, you know, maybe they, they veer a little bit left or right. And I think Carla and I would be excited by that. Like if they, um, had some movement and um, if they weren't just like a static thing, it's like, okay, here, we're done, moving on kind of scenario. Yeah, and thank you again to everyone who has already contributed as well. It's mm -hmm. been really nice having um, the, the feedback that we've had so far and the engagement, so thank you. 
Any questions? 